Crunch or Crunch, tell me where you at. Your motivation guy is back. So you've actually managed to do it, guys. We've reached one million subscribers. And it's really all thanks to your support. So a deal is a deal. And it's about time that I uphold my end of the bargain. So it's time for us to tell my story of how I made it to our mat today. But I can't tell my story on my own. I need to let the one and only Kristoff take it away. Here we go. Well, in that case, I guess it's time we finally tell the story of Keith Allen. One of the things that Keith Allen learned to do at this point early on in his life was to lose himself in video games and competition. As a kid, gaming was everything. He had a younger brother, Kyle, and they competed together in literally everything, especially in video games. It was also when Keith Allen first discovered that he had a serious case of gamer rage. So what people don't really know about me, um, well, the people I grew up know this very strongly about me, but I had the worst case of gamer rage. Oh my goodness, man, it was, it was bad. I'm so embarrassed. I like thinking about like what I used to do. My little brother, I'm three years older than him and, and me and him would just compete like in every single game. And my little brother, Kyle, man, he, I, I hate to admit it, but I think he was better than me <laughs> at most of the games that we would play. And so I hated to lose, I really did. And it got to a point where in the middle of a game, like I, I would always blame, you know, RNG. I would always blame, you know, something just about the game, about, you know, my brother, he's cheating or my friends or whatever. And I've, I've broken so many controllers. Like I used to break controller after controller. I have broken TVs, TVs, okay? Um, and it got bad, like I would just throw things, I would just tear things, like, um, and it got to a point where I knew it was like taking a toll on me when people didn't want to play with me. Like I was losing friends to play with, like people would literally say, I'm okay, like you, you got to take care of your issue, you don't, you don't make it fun anymore, like you take all the fun out of it. And I kind of started having that title as the guy that you didn't want to game with. And it didn't stop there either. Keith Allen was known as the crazy guy at school. The kind of guy who would turn into a complete madman if he played a sport and lost. He would curse everybody out and throw a tantrum if things didn't go his way. People actually found it hilarious and would crowd around just to see how he would react if things went wrong. Fortunately for Keith Allen though, it was something he would learn to manage as he got older. And so I was that guy, like I was known as that guy. So who I am today, I mean, it is crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy that now I'm the one that is giving advice to people who, who do suffer from, you know, gamer rage and who do suffer from, you know, like, just just not being able to control their emotions. And the cool thing about it is, is like, I understand. I get it because I was there for a really, really long time. Long before Keith Allen had become your one and only motivation guy, he was just a kid. He was a kid, just like anyone else. He lived with his mom and dad and his younger brother, Kyle. And unlike many of his friends, they all lived together under the same loving roof. But something Keith Allen learned from an early age is that growing up in a loving environment wasn't enough to keep dark thoughts away. He dealt with depression, low self-esteem, and eventually in the seventh grade, he even flirted with the idea of taking his own life. I was, <laughs> I was like the shortest in all my classes, like in middle school. And um, I felt like I was ugly. I felt like I just, um, you know, I just didn't really feel like I had a whole lot to offer. And I would always just judge myself. And I got to a point where I felt like I had all this pain in me. And I really felt like the world wouldn't miss me if I was gone. You know, like the world wouldn't care if I removed myself. And I really started to think about it. And I was like, I don't feel like I'm loved. I don't feel that people really like me. And it was just a horrible feeling of feeling like I was the bad guy, you know, feeling like people looked at me like a villain. I, I didn't I didn't like the feeling. And so I started to just kind of meditate on what it would be like um, to kill myself. You know, what would it be like? Um, maybe people would love me then, you know, maybe people would miss me then. 
I started thinking about people that hurt me. And I thought about, well, maybe it's a way I can get, get back to them. Maybe I can hurt them more if I do that to myself. And so I remember in the process of doing it, I just had this moment and I kind of call it, I call it my God moment where there was this reality that hit me. Like, what are you doing? Like, are you serious? Just because of this one time in your life, you're going to sacrifice your entire existence, like, because it's hard right now. And I just remember just crying. I just crying, I just threw the knife and I just fell to the floor. And it was like everything that was inside just started flooding out. And um, I don't know if it was the next day or a couple of days later, but <laughs> my dad actually found the knife and he kind of called me over and he said, hey, what is this? And I had no choice but to tell him the truth of what happened. And I just remember his face. I remember his heart. I just remember like what, I just remember just the feeling of like, wow, like I'm, I almost destroyed my father. And you know, my mom found out. And I think the best thing that ever happened to me was them finding out, was them finding out that I felt the way that I did. And it was the beginning of a process of, of just healing. And so I never, ever, ever went back to that moment again. I never, ever had that, that feeling of, of doing that again. It was, it was like a deliverance for me. It was like when I got help, when people knew what I was going through, that's when it started. And so that's why I just encourage people that if you're going through pain, that is unspoken of, if you're going through hidden pain and hidden fear and, and hidden torment, you know, you have to get help. You have to let someone know, whether that be a family member, whether that be a parent, whether that be a friend, whether that be a teacher uh, or someone else you look up to, a neighbor, like you, you have to get help. And once you just allow people to know your pain and what you're going through, it is crazy the amount of truth that kind of comes in and you realize like, oh my goodness, life is not is what I thought. Like, it's not as bad as I thought. And, and you begin to get healing in how you see yourself and people around you. So, yeah. You know, I told the truth in that moment because I lied all the time, but I told the truth in that moment because first of all, I'm a bad liar. <laughs> I'm a very bad liar. Um, I've never lied that well at all. Like, if I lied, my parents usually knew. But I think the truth is, is like, I really wanted help. I really wanted help. And so because I really wanted help without really coming out to say I need help, it was the moment where I could get some help. And so when they found out, it was relieving for me. While he had to face challenges in his early teens, they were still a pretty enjoyable time. All of that changed though, when he hit the 10th grade. Yeah, so middle school ended up, you know, ending on a great, great note. I still have friends today. Like I still have best friends today that are in my life from middle school, from that time. And so um, there was so many blessings, so many positive things that came out of that, that time. And so when I transitioned to, to high school, got on the basketball team at this high school that I was that I was at, and everything seemed to be okay. Like, of course, things were challenging and all of that, but there was a moment of low that really, really hit me. Ninth grade year was, was, was fun, it was great. And then going into my 10th grade year, it would be the worst year of my life. When I was 15, my 10th grade year, it was absolutely the worst year of my entire life. Everything was going so well. You know, I was on the basketball team. I had a bunch of cool friends. And then all of a sudden, in almost a blink of an eye, it just went down the toilet. <laughs> there was a gang that just kind of came out of nowhere and really just started to um, harass me and, you know, some of my close friends. and to the point where every single day I would come to school, these guys would come up to me and they would, you know, try to get me to join their gang and 
you know, they would start threatening me like, okay, if you don't, if you don't come on, we're gonna jump you. Over time, more and more of Keith Allen's closest friends began to join the gang that had emerged at his school, and it was starting to feel pretty overwhelming. He was threatened nonstop. People from the gang would prank him and tell him that they would jump him if they found him. It's pretty fair to say that in 10th grade, Keith Allen was truly afraid for his life. All of this came to a head one day at the end of track practice. As Keith Allen was leaving practice, he saw a mob of people with weapons heading in his direction. It seemed ridiculous that a school gang would try so hard over one guy, but that's exactly what they were doing. Keith Allen had to sneak out and hide in the school bus before finally escaping. After that point, he would hide in the library at lunch and then leave straight away after school. It was the longest year of his life, and it only came to an end when he eventually transferred to another school where things were finally much more manageable for Keith Allen. But transferring from one school to another didn't mean that everything would be smooth sailing from that point on. In fact, his greatest hardship was still yet to come. So when I was 17, I just graduated from high school and I feel like I'm the man, I'm on top of the world. And I remember it was not even a week after I graduated, me and all my friends, we went out to hang out at this, at this spot and I'm driving and I have friends who, who are in two other cars and I have one of my really close friends in the car with me. And so we're driving on the freeway and all of a sudden out of nowhere, out of nowhere with no explanation, my car spins out of control to the point where I completely black out, we hit a wall. And find out that my face hits the windshield. And I wake up in the hospital and the doctor said that I broke my jaw in three different places. They said I should have swallowed my tongue. And so me being alive was actually a miracle. After this traumatic event, it was revealed by the doctors that Keith Allen surviving the crash was nothing short of a miracle. According to them, he should have swallowed his tongue, and if that had happened, he likely would have choked before they could do anything about it. As it was, his face remained so swollen for months due to the operation they had to do on his jaw that he couldn't even recognize himself. There was a point where he actually thought that things would never return to normal, but instead of giving up, instead of letting his depression run rampant and beat him down, he persevered through all of it and it all made him stronger. Keith Allen used his strength to set himself on a new path, one that was connected to the thing that had helped him get through all the hardship in his life. He wanted to break into the gaming industry. And no way. No oh way! Oh <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> his first opportunity to take a step into the gaming world was with the Nintendo Wii. He was hired as one of the presenters for the Wii Channel, a platform-exclusive channel showcasing video games. Here, he was able to play Nintendo games with celebrities and athletes for Nintendo themselves, and it was a fantastic first step into the industry. Soon after all of that, he had an interview with a major gaming network at the time, G4. This TV network was basically an attempt to create MTV of gaming, and it ended up running for 18 years as a pretty popular station, helping to launch the careers of people like Tina Wood, who went on to be the executive producer of new programming for Xbox, and Matt Eisman, who went on to be the co-host of American Ninja Warrior. To put it simply, this would have been a major boost to Keith Allen's career. But then, out of nowhere, Keith Allen's dreams were crushed by his own anxiety. There he was, sitting in front of the woman who was in charge of casting. She had loved him. She knew he was determined to become a major personality in the gaming scene. This was it. I was so excited, I was very eager, and I met with the person that was the head of casting. And I remember going on this interview, and I walk into the office, I sit down, and she just starts interviewing me. And all of a sudden as she's interviewing me, I just start having like the biggest panic attack in the history of panic attacks. Okay. <laughs> While she's talking to me, this was by far the most embarrassing, humiliating, awkward moment of my entire life. Like she's talking to me all of a sudden, I'm like breathing hard and I'm like sweating. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to keep it together. And I'm not lying to you, man. I literally black out. Like, I black out. I wake back up and she's like... <laughs> and I'm like... And that was the moment I knew that she was never going to call me again. 
One of the only things that pulled Keith Allen through at all was his hold on his faith. After getting married and growing that faith, he and his wife became pastors. And it was at this time that he knew he needed to face his fears to be able to move forward. I knew that I knew that I needed to go back to the school, which drove me into fear. The school, when I was 15 years old, that ended up giving me nightmares. I mean, it was so traumatizing being bullied and, and fearing for my life. And I knew that if I was ever going to excel, if I was ever going to break free from a lot of these demons that I've had since I was 15, I needed to face my fears. And so a, a door opened up for me to go back to my old stumping grounds, the high school where I got chased out to speak, to do motivational speaking um, and share my faith and share love and I was able to do it. So he did something that he thought he would never be able to do. He went back to the high school that gave him the worst years of his life. He faced those fears and those memories that had been hiding under his skin. He spoke to hundreds of students there in an auditorium, sharing not just his faith, but also his story and inspiring them to keep working and to keep moving forward. Simply put, he gave them hope. It was then that it happened. Keith Allen wasn't just Keith Allen anymore. This was the birth of your motivation guy. Bunch of crunch army, woo! Hey, where you at? The motivation guy is back. When Keith Allen came to Pro Guides, Fortnite was just climbing to its peak and it started to infiltrate the mainstream. Rappers and athletes alike were playing it and mimicking the dance moves and just like everyone else on the planet, Keith Allen fell in love. But I love Fortnite because it gives you an opportunity to constantly get better and, and you can constantly, and you can get humble. And as soon as you think you're somebody and you think you're on this level, then you play against someone or, or you play with someone and you realize uh, you still got some work to do. And so that's why I really, really fell in love with this game. It was one of the most unique shooters he had ever played and the combination of mechanical skills and strategy was like love at first sight. When he first started presenting for Pro Guides, Keith Allen hadn't really established his on-screen persona. What's up guys, it's Keith Allen. And on this video, I'm gonna do a Nate Hill analysis. The channel had only 11,000 subscribers and so he decided to draw inspiration from someone else in the tips and tricks scene that was already starting to see success that Denver guy. For me, when I obviously started at Pro Guides, um, it was such an awesome opportunity. Um, Christoph and Sam um, invited me in, into their company, and so they just wanted to see what I could do. And so I looked at other people that I thought were really motivating, and I, and I really love that Denver guy, uh, the PE coach. I mean, he's done such an amazing job with connecting to his audience and connecting to the people that follow him and look up to him. And so I was like, you know what? I wanna be like him. And I took it to the next level. Like I started to like really trying to emulate him, you know, um, trying to sound like him, trying to talk like him, trying to, trying to match his energy. I really loved his voice um, over the videos. And, and then I kind of hit this point where it just wasn't working out for me. So Keith Allen needed to figure something out that would help people get more engaged with his original strategy. He thought back to the time he went to his old school. He was the motivation guy now, and that wasn't shining through in his videos. One day before he got into the tips, he started saying motivational statements, and slowly but surely, something began to change. The viewers were starting to engage more and more. He was starting to get contacted on his Instagram more often from people saying that he had saved them from taking their own lives as well. It began to dawn on Keith Allen then that all of this was bigger than just him. It was bigger than the paycheck at the end of every month. It was bigger than any sort of fame or notoriety he might gain over time. It was about being a light shining in the dark. It was about becoming a voice of hope to a new generation. You know, one of my favorite memories from Pro Guys and just being here and, and just being connected, being the motivation guy, it, it happened very early on when I had a guy, um, this has happened so many times, this has probably, this has happened hundreds of times where I've gotten DMs um, of usually of teenagers, of young people that have confided in me and, and have told me that I saved their lives. And this one kid in particular had his entire suicide like planned out. It was it, he was, he was gonna die. And he said that I saved his life. He said that I saved his life from some motivation that, that, I, that I did um, in the intro of a video. 
And so he said that he started watching all my Instagram posts and and so for me that day, like that was that was when I knew like what I was doing was more serious than I, I could ever imagine. Like it was way more serious than the game. It was way more serious than just, you know, getting more followers or, you know, growing in a channel, like saving people's lives were at stake. And so that's when I knew like this was my calling. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm where I'm supposed to be. And that is to make a difference in this world. As Keith Allen started to become more and more confident as a presenter, he started to be himself more and more. One day before a video, he was just playing around and he said, hey, before we start, sit down and grab your favorite snack. His just so happened to be what we all know and love him for, the Bunch of Crunch. So, so obviously I'm doing motivation and that's going really well. And, and one day as I'm just doing what I'm doing on voiceover, I'm giving tips and tricks, I'm doing all this stuff. Before we get into the video, I just kind of say a line. I'm like, all right, before we get started, I think it started off like, all right, before we get started, hey, get your favorite snack and uh, let's let's do this. And it kind of just started progressing and started developing. Like every video I would do, I would like take it a little further. Like, all right, so today, you know, sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, da da da. And then one day, I was like, you know what? My favorite candy, my go-to candy, my entire life has been Bunch of Crunch. So I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna say that. So one day I was just like, all right guys, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. And if you guys don't know, my favorite candy is Bunch of Crunch. And this thing started happening to where I would read on the comments, people would hit me up on my Instagram, and they would like, Bunch of Crunch. I'm like, Bunch of Crunch? Like, <laughs> like I like Bunch of Crunch, do you like Bunch of Crunch too? And I just started, it just kind of like this phenomenon started happening where people were like, yeah, do more of the Bunch of Crunch thing. And so that gave me even more confidence and, and more freedom to kind of take it to the next level. And so then it kind of became like the staple of the motivation guy and what I was doing. And so now people were anticipating it, people were excited to hear it, and I was excited to say it. And so I started just kind of making it a real, you know, catchphrase and started to say, all right, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. Before long, people started flooding the comments section of Pro Guide's videos with Bunch of Crunch, so he started to have more fun with it. The Bunch of Crunch army rallied around it, and that was how Keith Allen's famous catchphrase came about. While Keith Allen has seen success as your motivation guy, as the head of the Fortnite fam's Bunch of Crunch army, that doesn't mean he's stopped fighting. The biggest challenge that Keith Allen has ever had to overcome is a tragedy that actually took place this year. His father, mentor, and number one supporter had passed away suddenly from a heart attack. So I've been through a lot of, obviously, different things in my life. I've been through a lot of trials. I've been through a lot of storms in my life. And, you know, um, obviously through my faith, I've been able to overcome every single one of them. And recently, the biggest storm the biggest test, the biggest curveball, the biggest knock to me in my life just happened recently out of nowhere. Um, my father um, passed away suddenly um, from a heart attack. And um, it just happened so fast. You know, I, I saw him on this day, I saw him, it was it happened on a Sunday and I saw him earlier in the day and um, I was able to hug him and, and um, you know, we were able to really connect. And I didn't know that what he said to me was his last words. And he, he encouraged me. He actually gave me encouragement. The last words that he ever said to me were encouragement. My father was my motivation guy. You know, he is the main reason that I'm doing what I'm doing today. You know, he was the coach of all my teams as a kid. I mean, he was the father that was a mentor to so many other kids as well. I mean, everybody loved my dad. Everybody came over to the house to connect with my dad. I mean, he was a dad to so many, so many people. And he's been my number one encourager. He's been my number one supporter. Um, he's been the one that I've been able to come to when I've had confusion or difficulty in, in life. And he's always had that sound wisdom. And so I'm grateful of the life that he lived because he really inspired myself, he inspired my brother Kyle um, to be the men that we are today. And so right now in the midst of pain, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of 
you know, feeling even anger at times on why, on why this happened. I'm reminded that my father, I know, would want me to continue to do what I've been doing, to not give up on inspiring other people and motivating people. And I just want to encourage you, if you lost a loved one, you know, if, if you've been through tragedy in your life, I encourage you to keep going. I encourage you to, um, to keep moving forward, to be, a, to be a light, even in a dark place, to be a light to people that are also lost and are also going through it. And so I vow to continue being who I am, to be the motivation guy to you guys, because I love you guys and I believe in you. While a large portion of the Fortnite community comes to Keith Allen for their daily motivation, Keith Allen's motivation came from his dad. His father was someone who supported him from day one. He was the person who bought Keith Allen his very first PlayStation and Nintendo 64, and without that, he probably would never have been interested in gaming to begin with. He was a father who was there for his sons in every step of the way. Keith Allen's father might be gone now, but his name will live on through the one and only Your Motivation Guy, the host you all come to know and love over the past few years, Keith Allen. When I started working at Pro Guides, the person that was most excited out of everybody in my life was my dad. Like, he watched all my videos, he would share with all his friends, and he was just always bragging about me and always um, just kind of just sharing sharing me with, with all his people. And he was just so proud of me. And so I'm just encouraged that because he loved this and because he loved what I, what I did and what I was doing while he was alive, I'm encouraged to keep going harder than ever, you know, to continue to do the thing that my dad loved that I was doing. And that has encouraged people.